Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Box Office Talk. This is the show where I break down what happened at the box office, see if my predictions for the top five are correct, then make predictions for next week's top fives. So let's get right on into it. Last week I predicted that number one would be Magic Mike's Last Dance, number two would be Knock at the Cabin, number three would be 80 for Brady, number four would be Avatar The Way of Water, and number five would be Puss in Boots. And I got almost all five of my predictions wrong this weekend. I only had one correct. Um, and there are, there are a couple of you who didn't make the obvious same mistake that I did last weekend, uh, which was to, you know, not predict the Titanic re-release. I should have, and I knew it was coming. I made it a mental note like a couple weeks ago, like, don't forget this that weekend. And I did. I totally blanked that's on me, but there's a couple other reshuffles here that I just I, I just want to get into right now. So let's get right on into it. Number one was obviously Magic Mike's Last Dance. Considering that the other two movies actually made a you know pretty decent amount of money, you know it was no surprise that this would clear the top spot. It's also you know attached to a, a franchise, a trilogy at this point. You know recognizable character. But I think what may surprise a lot of people is that it actually did worse out of the other two movies. This movie only opened with eight million dollars this weekend. Now to put that into perspective, it is lower than the first movie's $39 million opening weekend, and it's lower than Extra Extra Large's <laughs> uh, $12 million opening, which, yeah, going from like a $39 million opening to a 12 one, that's, you know, that's not good either, but now you're dipping into $8 million and it's like, yeah, why did they even, seeing how the second movie, you know, performed on its opening weekend, it is kind of surprising that this movie, you know, cracked number one, or, or, or actually, no, no, let me take a step back. It's surprising that this movie actually, you know, got into production in the first place, you know what I mean? Who knows, you know, the stepping stones to that. I, I you know, was a fool and did not look up the full um, extra, extra large um, box office run, so I actually, I actually don't, have it in my head if it actually did well, if it doubled its budget or whatever. Maybe we'll talk about that next weekend when I when I talk about Magic Mike again. Um, but yeah, this this right now is not really great. You know, it's number one at, at the box office this weekend, and it's the number one Super Bowl champ. But it, it, to to what? You know, <laughs> like to what to what end? You know, is this a celebration? You know what I mean? It still needs fifty eight million until it outgrosses Magic Mike two, and worldwide it is only sitting at eighteen million right now, and they need one hundred and five million until they outgross Magic Mike 2, so not a great start, to say the least. It has a ways to go to outgross the other installments of the series, but also it even has a ways to go until it doubles that $49 million budget. Not not a great opener. Number two is Avatar The Way of Water, climbing up just a little bit back up here, making $6.8 million, adding to a domestic total of $646 million. Now, it still needs $139 million until it outgrosses the original film. It is still behind Titanic by $19 million and Top Gun Maverick by $72 million as far as the 2022 overall domestic runs at the box office. However, at the all-time domestic runs list, um, it still needs six million until it outgrosses Jurassic World. So, you know, this movie is still slowly but surely, you know, probably not going to be outgrossing some of these movies, you know, on the domestic end. But, you know, Jurassic World, I think it definitely will, at least by, you know, two weeks from now. And if it continues to have a little bit more of a slow crawl, you know, Titanic is just 19 million away. Worldwide, it is now sitting at $2,213,000,000. Um, still needs 686 million until it outgrosses the first movie. And it is one million behind Titanic. And what what that means, what I've been talking about for a while now, is that once it gets that one million, which a lot of sites have already declared, like it has already outgrossed Titanic, which it, it, it's because it, it's going to. That means it is going to enter the top three highest grossing films worldwide of all time list. That top three, Avatar The Way of Water and Infinity War and Endgame. All three starring Zoe Saldana. Congrats, girl! That is awesome for this movie. But speaking of Titanic, we should probably talk about that a little bit because it just got re-released. It came in at number three. Um, it made $6.4 million. So, you know, when we get the actual numbers, there is a possibility that maybe Titanic squeaks above Avatar. But for right now, this is what we have. It adds to a domestic total of $665 million. Worldwide, it is sitting at $2,214,000,000. So, yeah, like I said, Avatar Way of Water is just literally $1 million behind that. 
Which, how crazy is that to be James Cameron and you're able to, you know, make new films that, you know, break records, have these tremendous runs, but also can re-release your other films and, and, and go like, yeah, these are also doing pretty good for, for re-release standards, you know? That's just... The power of that man is, is is crazy, to say the least. But, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Let's move on to number four, which is 84 Brady. You know, sticking around a little higher than Knock at the Cabin, because obviously it is Super Bowl weekend, so it makes sense this would have a slightly better hold, making $6.0 adding to a domestic total of $24 million. Now, we still don't have a worldwide total for this thing. I'm assuming that, like, the Super Bowl is mostly just a, like, U.S kind of thing like if you make a movie about like these four legendary actresses going to the Super Bowl for Tom Brady I'm assuming that like people worldwide don't really give a shit about that anyway so it's like th that makes a little bit of sense but as far as looking at that budget and seeing it's 28 million dollars they still haven't even crossed that initial point not not great you know the Super Bowl movie did okay as far as like hey it's in the top five and it didn't drop off immediately but like it's still kind of a flop yeah, who cares? Let's move on to number five, which is Knock at the Cabin. Now, the thing about this one is that it is really neck and neck right now with the number six film, which I won't talk about yet. In fact, the numbers website has them listed as the same thing. So I was like, is there, is, does Box Office Mojo have it listed in any other way where one movie has the edge? And it does by $0.001 million. So Knock at the Cabin made $5.501 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of $23 million. That is still $19 million away from outgrossing Lady in the Water. Worldwide, it is sitting at $36 million, so $36 million until it outgrosses Lady in the Water. So this movie overall is still looking like it's going to be M. Night's, you know, lowest grossing film outside of uh, the... I, I mentioned it last week, and I made a point of, like, people usually forget about this movie, and and here I am fucking forgetting about it right now. Something Awake? Wide Awake? Is that it? Yeah. Um, and, you know, outside of Lady in the Water, I still think there's a chance for it to outgross that that movie. But, you know, just it, it didn't really have a great holdover from last weekend as well. Like I said, 80 for Brady slightly held a little bit better. Um, I, 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 I did notice that the cinema score wasn't completely high on this thing. So I think, you know, overall, it kind of makes a little bit of sense why it may not have the same kind of audience connection that some other horror successes have had recently. But um, it is four million away from doubling its 20 million dollar budget. So there you go. You know, you can consider it a success in some way. I think, you know, if we're lucky, we'll see it triple it. You know what I mean? Um, but hey, that's 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 solid. You know, it doesn't have to be the biggest hit in the world. It's still technically a hit. It, it made some kind of money. Let's move on to number six, which is Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, making 5.5 zero zero million dollars. Like I said, with Knock at the Cabin, Knock at the Cabin having that point oh oh one advantage as of right now when I'm doing this video, so if it changes and Puss in Boots is ahead of Knock at the Cabin, I am sorry. But the fact that it's as neck and neck shows that Puss in Boots has, like, way more, like, cultural relevance as of, like, right now in this moment at the box office than Knock at the Cabin is, you know? Which, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to say, like, yeah, Puss in Boots is way better anyways. I'm just saying, like, it's interesting to analyze, you know, that movie that came out, and it didn't make the greatest splash when it did, but, you know, people started talking about it more. It gained legs over the holidays, and now it's making all this money. So some people have been saying, you know, it's the greatest showman of this year, and that's absolutely true. Um, but yeah, it made 5.500 million, adding to a domestic total of $158 million. So for DreamWorks, it is 5 million over the run of Trolls and 3 million over Over the Hedge, and it now needs 2 million until it outgrosses How to Train Your Dragon 3 at, at the domestic box office. Worldwide, it is sitting at $393 million. So $161 million still behind the first Puss in Boots. Like I said, domestically, the fact that they outgrossed the first movie there was really great worldwide it's looking like it's not going to have that same kind of success but it doesn't really matter you know it, it's on a budget of 90 million dollars it has already quadrupled it you know it crossed over the 360 point to do so so now they're on their way to do quint quintuple is that the fifth thing well i'm not going to try to guess it, it, <laughs> it basically needs 450 to you know five times its budget so maybe we'll see that happen that would be pretty dope but anyways um it is outgrossed penguins in madagascar by 27 million and home by 8 million and now is behind shrek needing 98 million to do so so yeah this movie is still you know clearing the way making waves and that's that's pretty special. I don't really have much more to add to this, though, so let's move on to number seven, which is a man called Otto, making $2.62 million, adding to a domestic total of $57 million. So $32 million behind Christopher Robin, now Mark Forrester's other film. Worldwide, it is sitting at $92 million, and it is still behind Finding Neverland in the worldwide charts by $23 million. 
but the fact that it is just eight million away from doubling its 50 million dollar budget you know it's a little bit hopeful to say the least um i, I believe this movie is still going to be here next weekend i believe ant-man is really well well and that liam neeson one so just those two movies are like the only things that you could say like push stuff out of the top 10 but a man called auto is kind of high enough and it's held over you know solidly enough where i think we might be able to see that $50 million budget be doubled worldwide, which would be pretty neat. You know, obviously not the biggest hit in the world, but if it can at least do that, my, you know, faith in, you know, the mid-budget film can be, you know, saved. I mean, the fact that it's made this much already, you know, that's actually pretty damn good. You know, most of these movies just come and go and they flop horrifically. So the fact that this one has had some kind of staying power is nice. Number eight is Missing, making $2.6 million, adding to a domestic total of $26 million. So just by a couple hundred thousand this weekend, it has outgrown the first film searching which is pretty damn special to say the least I really hope this does send a message that we, we don't need like a ton of different movies with the same you know kind of uh, storytelling crutch we don't we don't need like a billion of these but we need like this team I think that's the main message that I hope gets sent out to Hollywood is that you know I would love to see more screen you know uh, screen movies like this and, and make them really good and entertaining but you need this team to keep making movies that's Anish Giganti that's Sevohanian and and everybody I, the editors from the the first searching now directing this movie I'm sorry I don't know your names right now but you need this team to keep working together and making movies like this and even other stuff you know run was also really good and that went to Hulu imagine if that was like a big box office hit anyway so let's move on to number nine which is Mathrigan making 2.3 million adding to a domestic total of 90 million dollars it is only a couple hundred thousand over the black phones domestic run right now and now needs two million until it outgrosses Halloween kills for the atomic monster production company it is still behind the conjuring 2 by 12 million We're Worldwide, sitting at $165 million. It is still behind The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It by $35 million there. But for Blumhouse, it has outgrossed The Black Phone and Insidious 2 by $4 million, and now needs $7 million until it outgrosses Insidious The Last Key, the next film, um, in its way, <laughs> in, the, in the Blumhouse ranks, which is pretty damn special. I've, I've said enough about this, and the things that I've said about missing, you know, that you need that team to keep making movies, the same applies to Mathrigan as well. I've talked about it to death. It's probably not going to be here next weekend, if I'm looking at this correctly. If I'm analyzing this right, so you've had a hell of a run, and I loved you being here, Mathrigan. Closing out the top 10, a returner, plane, making 1.1 million, adding to a domestic total of 30 million dollars. Worldwide, it is sitting at 41 now, so 9 million away from doubling that 25 million dollar budget. Once, once again, I was really hoping that this would be like a slightly bigger hit. I was not expecting like big blockbuster hit. Oh my gosh, it's has, it's has such a great staying power. But I was kind of expecting like, hey, some people are talking about how funny the title, you know, Just Being Plain is. Maybe so that'll translate into ticket sales. Maybe the fact that some critics have actually said it's pretty entertaining, you know, would translate into ticket sales as well. And, and you know, some people have been steadily going to see it. I mean, I went to go see, you know, the amazing more recent theaters. And in the concessions line, some people were chatting and they were like, we're going to see Plane. And I was like, like, this late in the game? All right, shit, you know? I was, because I did like playing, so I, I was rooting for its success, and it, you know, is nine million shy of doubling that budget, so a bit of a bummer, but hey, I, I don't think Gerard Butler is never going to make a movie again. I'm pretty sure he's fine. <laughs> now it's time for the fun part, the predictions for next week's top five. Number one, I'm going with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, because that's very obvious. Then number two, this might be a bit bold, but since the numbers were so low this weekend, I'm just going to go for it. Number two, I think Marlowe might have a chance of sneaking in, you know, a noir kind of film based off a popular book series. Liam Neeson is in it, and he has some fans still, maybe. Maybe this one has a shot, you know? Then number three, Magic Mike's Last Dance. Number four, Avatar The Way of Water. Then number five, 80 for Brady. If you're wondering why, I'm not predicting Titanic because I'm pretty sure the re-release just lasts for a week. So by the time the weekend rolls around, it won't be here unless they extend it or I am just being fucking stupid. If you want to predict Titanic, go ahead. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I will not for right now or ever because I can't go back and edit in new predictions once this is up, and nor would I. Anyways, uh, what are your predictions? Leave them in the comments below, and as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.